Mike MDs. Thanks for joining us today. Today I have this 2016 BMW X5. Uh, customers complaining of the back suspension sagging after sitting a while. It's an intermittent issue. It says it happens around uh, once, maybe every 24 hours, the back sags. This does have air ride suspension and we've been trying to duplicate it and we finally have it. I can hear some hissing and the way we did it was, let's see if you can hear it. It's hard to hear in there. Uh, we put it up in the air, we activated the system to try to increase the pressure, nothing. Um, but what we did was lift, lift one side and then torsionally uh, it'll transfer the center of gravity more towards that back rear back there. So that's what we were trying to do. Plus change the, the fold of the airbag itself. Um, and when, once it's compressed a little bit, it changes the little fold where it goes underneath the cup. I'll show you later. Um, but finally it worked. So if you can't get it to duplicate, then let's try that. Well, this car has really low miles. It only has 30,000 miles on it. And it was in an accident when the car was new. And they did about 20 some thousand dollars worth of work from the back end. But it all looks pretty clean. We can't find any uh, obvious signs. And, and then again, that was a while ago. So uh, something's going on. And the fact that both rear uh, are actually lowering at the same time makes us think that it's something close to uh, probably the the valve the air valve block uh, but we hear hissing noise out the back when it does leak and it's definitely intermittent uh, it's hard to duplicate we try pumping it up uh, manually through the diagnostic machine we can activate the pump um, but it's not leaking it's only when it's loaded down and it happens like once out of every 24 hours ish and it just happened this morning I uh, just caught it on video and you can see it pumped its way up already right now. So let's put it in the air and see if we can find anything. We'll pull some panels off and take a look there. All right, now we have this guy in the air and I'm going to check underneath here do a do a check of some of the lines and the components. The actual pump is under this area and the valve block that's in charge of uh, activating and managing uh, the pressures. And this system, it has the airbags in the back as well. You can see them tucked up in there in the back. It's kind of hard to see here. Get the light in there. You can see it. There's one there. Maybe the side's easier to see. You can see it there. Right there is, is the level sensor. Uh, there's one on each side here. There's the other one there. So I want to check those, see if the wires are damaged, see if anything is damaged. Uh, they look fine, but I'll double check. And check any serrations in the actual bag itself. Uh, usually, like I said, if it's one side, then usually that side is just the one that's having the issue. Uh, it's independent, the system is, so just one side will sag. And the system has a reservoir. Um, also, if it drops low and the car wakes up, it'll pump it back up. Now, this one's just acting a little bit different. So let's do a check and uh, get some soapy water and spray it on some of the lines and also uh, move some stuff around. Not too much though, I don't want to move, move it too much only because uh, sometimes you do that and it'll never happen again. Uh, this is a little different, that's usually with electrical issues. I'm going to start using soapy water in the back and we'll go from there. I don't see anything right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the diagnostic machine and activate the, the air pump to build up some extra pressure and then squirt it down. The head is hooked up to the car, ignition on. Let's set the charger to power saving mode. 
power supply mode. All right, there we are. Don't want to kill the battery. All right, now all these are the computers that the car has for all the systems. Um, if I click on it, I'm gonna take a shortcut straight to it. So this is electronic height control. Let's click on that guy and see if I can activate the pump that way. Component activation. Air spring, that's what I want. Air springs are filled and bled for about 15 seconds. Well, I don't want bled, I just want it filled. Activate, let's see what happens. You can hear the pump motor kicking on. So the pump is in here, I can hear it. I don't hear anything leaking, but let's, oh, hold on, I see some bubbles there. Those might just be residual. Let me get a flashlight on that. Squirt some more on here. Let's see if I see anything. Flashlight. Oh, I actually do see something. Let me zoom in on that. Let me get a better light. All right, let's spray the other side. Now I have a light on it. Let's get it back in there. Okay. Let's see. This is the right side. There it is. Okay. And look at this one. It looks like it's leaking the same way. Right at the cramp. Look at it. So this is a no-brainer, it looks like. There it is. So it's also leaking right in there. Yeah, man, both of these crimps, this is the first that we've seen the crimps leak. They might be aftermarket, because like I said, this thing was in an accident a while ago. Uh, if these are aftermarket ones, it's kind of common, aftermarket stuff on these Beamers, they just don't last. Uh, always, always go factory if you're gonna keep the car. Um, but this guy didn't know, it's probably the insurance company, what they allowed. A lot of times they'll do that. But the car was pretty new, so they may be factory. I don't want to just jump to conclusions here. I'll know once I take it out and do the job. Cool, so we found it. They're both leaking, which like I said, is super rare on a low mileage newer car. Normally it's just the uh, one side. Or like I said, if both are leaking, then it's usually a line. Uh, is pinched or something in here or usually the little check valve and the valve block goes bad and uh, depending on temperature it'll leak through that valve in that case you replace the valve um, you can replace the whole pump unit but it's really expensive I think it's like 1300 bucks or something like that maybe 1200 but you can just replace the valve a lot of times in there if the car is old like 200,000 miles and you know replace the whole thing obviously um, so anyway, let's sell the job and get it done. So this is what the new spring looks like. They're real easy to go in. Just take the rear wheel off. Um, these things index right here so they go in and lock. You just have to be careful with the routing with the line uh, going. You want it to go through here. So fish it in first through here once you get to that point and then connect it and then lift this up and lock it. If you do it after, it won't push down in here because this is like a little uh, half moon that's almost closed. So feed it in that way and then lock it in. All right, so we're going out with the old bag. You basically can pull this down to the suspension and this will sneak out. So you just turn it, uh, you clock it and pull it down and pull it out and it'll come out and here's that line we we're talking about here there's a little seal gasket that you can pull up and this will pop out and you can do it here it's pretty easy and here's the bottom here it's just a detent click in click out piece of cake all right now we're going back in with a new one and you see the bottom here it just clicks right in but first on the top you want to in push it up index it 
and then when you load down the suspension line up the bottom there to where it clicks in you can even lube the little ear tabs right here with some lubricant so it clicks in easier and uh, it's that easy and when going back together and you don't need to adjust the ride height or anything the sensors um, and the computer involved has already memorized where it's supposed to be at unless it had some like major work done then you'll need to hook it to the computer and adjust the ride height but this is kind of a plug and play thing it's uh, real easy the older first generation x5s you did have to adjust the ride height and this job was a lot harder you had to take off some interior panels to access the top bolt up there and it was definitely a more difficult or more involved job not really difficult but the, these newer stuff it's, it's they make it a lot easier now and here's the old bag out next to the new one here and usually what happens is right in here you'll get some little cracks right where it folds and once it's at the right spot the the suspension sags a little bit that crack will open and then you'll get that leak that's why these leaks sometimes are intermittent uh, because of that reason they'll happen like maybe once uh, in a while or if you park in an incline and it just folds it just right on that crack where it wears the most then you'll get that leak in this case we actually had a leak at the seam uh, right here which it's hiding you can't see it um, but anyway all right now that we have this thing in you can see that it's locked down on the bottom you can see the little detent right there uh, locked in now this is really hard to do it this way if you're strong you can do it you can lock it in i'm personally not that strong eddie our heavy hitter he's actually doing this job he's a lot stronger than i am he was able to lock that in there um, what i usually do is get the wheels on it get it lined up on the bottom there once the top is in get it lined up on the bottom put the wheels on it uh, drop it on the hoist to where the tires are touching um, to where the ride height would normally be and I wake the car up by opening the door and the pump will kick on start pumping this thing up putting pressure on the wheel and then it'll lock itself in um, you just have to make sure it's locked in and then you can put all the weight uh, on the vehicle torque the wheels down and you're pretty much set and ready to go now we just lowered the vehicle to the ride height a little bit lower than ride height and it started pumping up on its own once we started the vehicle up and then we slowly lowered the rack down and to put all the tension on the bag and again it started adjusting where it should be uh, i think it'd be fine starting off with the bag all the way collapsed on the ground but we just don't want to risk it we have the hoist here so why risk pinching the bag uh, with all the weight of the vehicle and that's it now we're going to test drive measure the right height as long as it's uh, pretty close uh, either side then you're good to go all right, after the repairs, we let this car sit for a good day and a half. And as you can see, everything looks great. We're gonna call the customer, we're gonna ship it. I hope you like this video, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you don't, your check engine light will come on.